9th of July 1916, First World War. Henri, a French soldier, goes on a rescue mission to find his best friend, Augustin. The road is covered with corpses, but none of them is him. He is lying in the pit a few meters ahead. Henri takes a rope and climbs down. In a state of complete exhaustion, Augustin is barely speaking and moving. He has been screaming for help for days to no use. Henri takes some water to put his friend back on his feet. He is still weak and can't properly walk, so Henri gives him a hand and they both limp back. It's not a night stroll with the bestie, but a war, so the Germans spot them and start blasting. I follow the logic that if they are shooting at our direction, something is in front of us. So I turned around and ran back to the crater. My logic never failed me. Sadly, brothers in arms get knocked down, and before Henri is absorbed by darkness, he sees Augustin's frozen visage. After a known period of time, Henri wakes up in an infirmary. Still suffering from the explosion, he laboriously stands up from his bunk and finds a note from Dr. Dr. Jasinski on the table. The doctor states Henri has got amnesia. You might notice the place is abandoned, there are barely any noises around. It's highly unlikely that somebody is preparing a surprise party for us. Or is it? Henri goes after his belongings and finds a hand crank flashlight. It works well in a dim lit room, but they don't rely on it much, as it will fade quite fast, unless you turn it on 24-7. There are new odd design solutions around the bunker. There are those holes in the walls that look at you like empty eye sockets. Behind the wall, Henri hears a voice. When he finds the source, it turns out to be an injured soldier who gives away a gun, as he says, to be finished off by his brother's soldier, but not by this monster. The revolver cylinder is empty and the bullets are in another room. And when I get back reloading my gun, something pulls him into the hole. The lesson is learned, I must stay away from the holes. Now I've got two bullets, one is for this thing, and another one is for me. I'll call this creature Master Splinter in my ass. They say you need to know your enemy, so I'm not getting caught, I'm trying to establish new contacts. To my surprise, no matter how hard you try, you can't kill it, it always comes back. While looking for the safe place, I hear it crawling somewhere in the walls. I can guess it made a chain of tunnels in the bunker. I make it to the administration room, the only safe place where Splinter can't get in, and where you have all the important stuff in the chest. There I find a map that shows what's what and my next goals. At the same room there is a heart of this place, a generator room with an engine that must be fueled up to keep this place alive and well lit. At the same time, the lights keep away the monster, which is my second reason to keep this engine up. A note lying nearby says there is no other way to run except the exit, which is collapsed. Only dynamite can clear the way out. I need to find dynamite and get out of here. In my search, I find notes that cast light on the events which were happening while Henri was in coma. That's where the fun begins. On the 30th of April, Henri's fellow soldier found old Roman tunnels connected to the bunker. Officers decided that it might have come in handy for a surprise attack. Most people welcomed this idea, so that it would keep their minds off the daily grind of the war. Sergeant Joubert mentions latent urns and manuscripts, which they they would keep for the post posterity. Johannes Nikolai writes back to his wife, who'd sent him a gift of a box of chocolate. He says that he woke up with a chill the other night. The strange sound was coming from the tunnels, a kind of a moan, a howl even. He didn't dare to shine a light inside for a fear what he might see. And then a scrambling thudding came racing towards him. A shape looked up out of the shadows. He was ready to fire. But it was his fellow soldier Toussaint. He'd been awakened too. But unlike Johannes, he dared to go deeper. He saw something he couldn't speak of. The following nine days they were digging deeper and blowing down the tunnels to clear the way closer to German lines. All the ancient texts they found were handed over to a rather educated soldier, Alex Neuer. Alex's friend died of wounds. And to get distracted, he started to read the texts. He found out that the papers are not Roman in origin, but Latin. What's more, they had no information Alex had ever known about Roman cultures, which was quite a shocker. The texts supposedly were of a religious nature, saying about crossing into the darkness beyond, and then something about sight. After two sleepless nights, Alex Neuer translated papers. They were of a religious nature. Authors who wrote it were bigots of some other world, dominated by darkness and ruled by a creature, which name Alex couldn't translate. These ancient people believed they found a means to immortality in this dark world. This pagan hell was full of spirits, monsters, and the air there was endlessly alive.
life with cries of torment and the sickly rattle of souls near death. They use the tunnels to reach this dark world in their pursuit of immortality. Besides blood orgies, they performed any horrific act it needed to gain immortality. After all, they found a substance that was meant to grant the worthy some sort of immortality in darkness. Alex spoke to no one about what he read in those texts so far. But Private LaRue came out of the tunnels claiming he'd seen everything Alex read about. It couldn't be coincidence, so he felt the urge to tell everybody and warn them of the tunnel's origins. Private LaRue was assigned to aid the engineers in mapping the Roman tunnels. When he entered the deepest area, he noticed a strange glowing liquid sipping from the walls. When he turned around, the walls of the tunnel were suddenly gone and he found himself in a vast plain of darkness. There was a sickly light in the distance, calling him forward. Between it and him, malformed shadows moved around. He blinked and everything was gone at first sight. LaRue requested medical help as he felt haunted. He couldn't get rid of visions he saw at the edges of his eyes. Part of him was still there in the tunnels. Command punished LaRue for the nonsense he'd been speaking out, and it meant Alex was next. He fell stuck between the Germans in front of them, high command behind them, and some horrible force lurking around them. For his losing tongue, Alex was punished and sent to the cells for two nights. There he saw nightmares, dreams of seductive darkness, and voices welcoming him. After two nights, he returned to his bunk, and at that time, everybody was speaking of nightmares and voices they heard. Nobody said anything to the officers, avoiding punishment. To make matters worse, the raids of the Germans started again. Again. Since then, everybody felt trapped. The entire barracks was awakened by the sounds from the tunnel. Nightly, they howled louder. Alex kept seeing dreams of pain wrapped in ecstasy. He couldn't stand it anymore. He decided to go down to the tunnels and find the way to stop it once and for all. High Command, of course, didn't tend to believe any of this nonsense and left things as they were. Many days later, Alex was found screaming his lungs out down in the tunnels. Alive, but deadly shocked. Even when tied to the stretcher, he he was screaming non-stop, or rather tried, as it sounded like a horrible rasp. The son in his letters explained that he didn't have to listen to Neuer's discoveries, because he had seen it himself. He described a ritual he was at. It started with the drinking of a liquid, sweet and thick, like mucus or honey, repulsive and yet intoxicating. As he drank it, it warmed his body and filled it with a lust for all carnal things, sex, blood and flesh. In there, there were others around, serving one master to the same end to immortality. The war, compared to the things he did in his dreams, was a mere play. Every night he woke up horrified, but in his dreams he was elated. He didn't want to accept it, but at the end of the day he was striving to get back into his dreams. After they opened the tunnels, the rats changed too. They got uglier, disfigured even, needless to say, highly aggressive. To prevent the spread of the rodents, all corpses must have been burned, as it if stopped their hunt for human flesh. To sun could he didn't hesitate the last of the dreams. He went down the tunnels to be closer to it. He believed he has the right kind of eyes, while others don't. Private soldiers had enough. The command didn't believe them, so they had to stop it. At night of the 6th of June, they exploded the tunnels with Toussaint inside. Who didn't mind? Spending days there, trapped by his own man, he drove into madness. He had visions of a gun world, bloody and terrible, beautiful and awful. He couldn't see it anymore as visions tasked him with something he didn't know. He asked God for help, but as Neuer said in his letters, they were beyond God's reach. Tusan came up with the only possible way to stop the visions, but enjoy his time being. He ripped his eyes out. All the guilty was found and sent to cells. If if everything above wasn't enough, on the 15th of June, soldier Fournier made a horrible discovery. They were running low on wine. At least after they blocked the tunnels, it was quiet for a whole month. German raids got less frequent and Sergeant Joubert needed a scout for a night patrol, out to the communication wires and back. The sergeant chose two candidates because he suspected those two of aiding traitors. Only one had to go. Henri or Augustin. Augustin agreed to a friendly game of chance. Little did he know, Henri is a professional cheater. Eager to revenge for the pranks Augustin has been pulling, Henri used a few tricks and won the game. So 
Augustine stepped out for patrol. Next morning, Augustine's bunk is still empty. Nobody saw him. Henri isn't beats. It was just a game, a joke he tried to pull. He didn't know it would turn out like that. Henri passed by a priest a few times, who had been staring at him like he knew something. But Henri didn't dare to confess. He still couldn't believe Augustine was dead. He didn't eat for many hours. The act he did crippled his body and mind. 24 hours later, since Augustine's disappearance, Henri couldn't deal with it anymore. At night, he pulled himself together and went outside to find Augustine. He was in the crater, unable to climb up. You know the rest. Morning. Augustine brought back Henri, who was barely breathing, injured from the explosion. Yet, Augustine was in perfect shape. Sergeants understood the crater was connected to the tunnels they were digging, so they had to check it in case they opened a back door into their own bunker. Augustine sat near his friend, who'd saved him and now lying unconscious. He recalled the events of that night and couldn't understand how he found the strength to pick up Henri and bring him to the bunker. However, he remembered one unpleasant accusation that happened to him. He left a stuffed rabbit back there in the hall, alone, unloved, forgotten. The following day, Henri opened his eyes for a few minutes and had no recollection of the events of the last few days. He seemed confused when looked around and at Augustin. On the other hand, Augustin felt rather strong and healthy, as he had some new purpose. A soldier called Farber wrote about scratches he and his comrades heard in the walls. It's not rodents, it's something louder and steadier that kept them awake all night. Later they heard a howl that was coming from the walls, not from the tunnels. Everybody was talking about hearing scratches inside the walls. Madness in the barracks. Soldier Reynard was murdered, but they don't show them the body. Officers were looking for a murderer, but no human could do such cruelty to Reynard. For the first time, soldiers were wishing for the order to attack. They'd rather face 1000 Germans than this nameless dread. A demon from tunnels is among them. And Farber decided to make the right thing and revenge for his friends, who were falsely accused of treason and court martial. He took his gun and went for a search. Later the same day, some men were in the mess and that thing crawled right behind Boyron. But Farber was there. He practically threw himself in front of the thing and shot it dead on. The monster retreated and then came back a little later after Farber. Everybody saw how this monster pulled Farber inside the wall. He was praying for salvation. The officers called soldiers cowards and hypocrites and then went mad. They were not capable of facing the reality and blew the exit and closed their people inside the bunker. Henri wakes up from his coma. He only sees the consequences of the chaos the monster brought. Or should I say Henri brought? 12th of July. Augustin was back in the chapel. He was trying to pray, but his mind was too alive. Intrusive thoughts of the crater, the rabbit, and that water Henri gave him. Its taste. Yet he didn't feel tired an inch. Instead, he felt this itch inside that he has got some bloody purpose higher than any war. 13th of July. Two days before Reynard's murder. Augustin writes he feels strange. He can barely find words to write. And his hands feel so odd. Gnarled, bulbous. One thought that constantly kept him awake all time was a seductive idea he mustn't bring into action. Augustin writes about blood on his hands. But it's not enough, he wants more. Soldier Tremblay is coming closer, so he can satisfy the needs. As you understand, all this time Master Splinter was Augustin, who drank glowing water from the water spring. That sweet, seductive water that Alex Neuer read about. The same water ancient people drank to become immortal. That's what they were speaking about. The cruel acts they dreamt about were endless bloodshed. Cheating, Henri sent his best friend to death. Realizing what mistake he'd made, he went searching for his friend, looking for redemption. Finding and giving him the water from the water source that comes from the the tunnels, he started a process of turning Augustin into a horrendous abomination which enjoys murder and flesh. Currently in the tunnels lies Henri's one of two keys to freedom, a trigger for dynamite. Inside you realize it was a way to another twisted reality. Those visions and shadows can easily shift one's mind. As an example, take a look at Toussaint, who'd gone mad after being there for too much. You can still find him there, singing songs, feeling at home. At first I couldn't understand whether 
whether he was a vision of the past or a real human. Everything became clear when I got a blast of buckshot in my face. He had a shotgun, that's why Rats and Sprinter were staying away. After picking up the shotgun from his dead body and the trigger, I felt I needed to go ahead before I went looking for the last piece of dynamite. There, deeper in the tunnels, there was a way to the crater, where we can see all these stones flying around and totally normal glowing liquid, nothing suspicious to risk your best friend's life. By the way, there you can find the stuffed rabbit. Having been collecting bullets for the shotgun for the whole game makes me feel like a Terminator, because one shot scares Augustin away and I have too many of them. Go into the administrator's room I find a hole in the wall, which means since now I am in constant danger and there is no place to feel safe anymore. The realization of it struck me like lightning. I froze and it took me about 5 seconds to recollect my thoughts and pull myself together. I went to the arsenal and found dynamite. Now I'm ready to go. I collect all my precious stuff to exchange for antidepressants that Henri will need all his life later on and then I blow the exit up. To my surprise, it doesn't go straight but somewhere down, which doesn't look good. I find myself in a vast Greek hall. Plenty of bridges connect the bunker and the exit. It goes without saying there is one barrier standing between me and freedom. August 10 sprinter in my ass, Lambert. Oh, Instead of shooting, I throw a stuffed rabbit for a change on a fragile bridge. August 10 comes closer to the familiar smell and picks the rabbit up. I pull the pin out of a grenade and throw it to August 10. <laughs> The bridge can't hold the explosion and it falls down along with the monster. The monster Henri unknowingly created. If you wonder what happens to him, here is the answer. He goes to the place where he belongs with, to the dark world Private LaRue was speaking about. Splinter can't reach me anymore, my ass is free of pain. I run as fast as Henri's legs can carry him. I see the light on the other side. After removing stones, Henri slips up and falls to the ditch. There we can see the dead bodies of the officers who tried to leave us behind. Henri is finally free from his nightmare. But wait for a second and you can hear German voices and dogs taking Henri from one hell to another. That was the first ending, but there is another one, slightly different and even more terrifying. In another scenario, if you get lucky, you might have avoided his sharp claws and kept Augustine alive and, by moving boxes closer to the wall, building yourself the way out without sending Augustine down. In this case, before being caught by the Germans, you can see your ex-best friend running free. Anyway, such a creature running free could cause havoc. That's the end of the game. What can I say? Don't pull pranks on your friends or you will turn into an ugly rat. If you enjoyed the video, please give a like and leave a comment. You will help me a lot. Peace.